Aladdin Video Game Review, 1994. You probably already know the story from the actual movie, but basically, Jafar wants power from the Sultan, so he tricks Aladdin, a street boy who has to steal to survive into getting the magic lamp for him, which Jafar intends to use to usurp the power. And Aladdin falls for the princess, although in, and she for him, although in this, without any video clips and you know, with the <laughs> condensed story from the film, it's actually slightly unclear. If you only play this game and don't watch the movie, you're not necessarily going to get why they fall for each other. And There's chunks of the story that have been edited or entirely cut out. I won't be spoiling the story of any. Either. Yeah. This is one of the very, very few licensed video games that do not suck. This and the TMNT game are you know, off the top of my head. Those are the two examples I tend to use. There might be like one or two others, but yeah, generally they suck. But this one really doesn't. Part of what really makes it work is the animation is just very, very close to that of the film. You know, in animation and film have progressed sooner, I suppose I should say, than video games. Also, partially because video games are a much younger medium than films. So around this time, you know, your basic video game, uh, this was about as good as it could get to look. And it, you know, and something like, you know, the Aladdin animated film actually also, you know, they're at about the same level as far as animation quality. This is slightly less, you know, it's, it's still somewhat pixelated and yeah, but still, it's very, very close. Now, I'm not certain about this, but I, as far as I understand, what they did was actually use some of the animators from the feature film itself on this game, and, you know, it really shows, because everything, I mean, a lot of what you see in this is actually directly from the film, which I'll get more into, but the couple of things, you know, the basic movements and angles and such, well, angle the one angle, it really looks like, you know, the film. It, you know, you control the Latin, obviously, and his movements really feel like they're those of a Latin from the film. You know, it's not just a different take on basically the same character. This is a Latin from, you know, this is the Disney Aladdin. The... The creativity is reasonable, there's, you know, basically a lot of the enemies in this game are, you know, minor characters or minor, you know, like the, the Akrabah, the, 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 the Sultan's forces, you know, are a frequent enemy in this. And basically you have just, I think, three or four different ones. And basically... When you defeat them, at least some of them, they will look the way they do when Aladdin outsmarts them or something. Like, you know, there's that one that gets spat on by a camel or something, and which, you know, you can also make the camel spit on them. And there's that... There's that one where he... Don't remember exactly how it does in the film. This is not a spoiler for the film. It happens really early on. It's a minor sight gag. He, you know, makes this one guard, like, he undoes his pants or something, so they fall around his his ankles, you know. You can do that. So that When you attack that guard, your first attack will, you know, render him 
will pants him, and the second attack will defeat him. So, you know, they have a lot of that. So it, again, really feels like you're playing the movie, other than, you know, the somewhat altered storyline. And maybe I should get a bit into that, how this relates to the story. Essentially, the story's the same. You know, the starting point and the conclusion are the same, and it is... Yeah, it's basically the same, but there are some things that they don't really get into because it wouldn't make for, you know, good video game levels, basically. So, there are segments of the story in the film that aren't in this, and then there are segments that they elaborate on, such as Aladdin's time in the dungeon, which is like two minutes of screen time in the film, it gets an entire level here. And then there are levels in this game that actually don't, you know, it's it's stuff that doesn't happen in the film, but you can kind of see where they got it from. And then there's the continuity, you know. From the very first level, Aladdin has the, you know, this, I don't know what it's called, rapier, it's, it's a, it's, it's a sword of some kind, you know, it's, a sword from that part of the world, which, yeah, if you've seen the film, yeah. That's actually also, that brings me nicely into the weapons in the game. Basically, you have the sword, which you can, you can stab with it if you are crouched, and, you know, being crouched might help you dodge some uh, projectiles. By the way, another enemy which I think is quite clever. In the film, again, very early on, there's a, like, a guy juggling knives. And in the game, he juggles knives, and some of those knives just happen to find themselves flying your way. So, yeah, he's an enemy too. Anyway, you, you can stab, and other than that, you can do this mildly broad slash with the sword. And you can do this standing, possibly running, even jumping. Even if you're hanging on a rope, you can still slash with the sword, and it'll be essentially the same movement. And the good thing about this, which some games where one of your main weapons is a sword really miss, is that in this game, it is, like I said, it's a mildly broad movement. You're actually gonna hit stuff in front of you, you know? You don't have to, you know, just, you don't have to be that precise about it. You, basically, if you're not too far away from your enemy and you slash with it, you're gonna hit your enemy unless it's not, you know, a couple of enemies need the other weapon you have, uh, you know, need to be attacked by that weapon in order to be defeated or even hurt. The other weapon you have, you know, every everyone else in this game, I believe, who throws stuff, throws, like, blades, you know, little, yeah, basically daggers, essentially. Don't know why Aladdin chose to throw apples. I don't know, maybe it's all he could really get his hands on. I don't you know, times are tough and he is a thief. Don't know why he'd be throwing away his dinner. Even more strange that it actually works. I don't know, maybe everyone in Aquabah has some sort of, you know, allergy that I don't know about. Anyway, yeah, you can throw apples, and you collect them in the levels. You can only collect 99, which is slightly annoying, but at the same time, it, it keeps you on your toes, because you still can't just throw them all the time. And at the same time, it you know, when you reach 99, you might as well throw some, even if, like me, you're, you know, really careful about using ammo. Because you're not going to get any more. It's only going to earn you points, and that is a little, what is a little annoying about this is that the points, I believe it's 10,000, it's 10,000 or 100,000, that is the top which you can get to, and after that, yeah, and you know, basically if you die a couple of times, you don't lose the points you have when you die, and if you then, just, you know, start back over and earn more points, you're gonna get to that, but yeah, other than that, the high score is actually, the, you know, the high score table is actually part of the replayability of this, other than the fact that it is freaking addictive. There are three difficulty settings, and, you know, this helps to make it accessible for people who, I mean, 
this is one of the first play, first games I ever played. This is one of the games that taught me how to play video games. So yeah, you know, you can start with this game if you've never played a video game. This this is a decent enough place to start, and it will provide challenge for you know better players. One thing this game has on you know other Disney games such as Hercules is that Aladdin really handles very smoothly. He feels like, you know, he's a bit of a swashbuckler in the film and that's very much the case here also. It is a swashbuckler action game, you know, a pretty simple one, but you know, you're climbing on ropes, you're hacking at people with a sword and yeah, running around, jumping for your life. And he really feels as athletic as he is in the film, you know, and that's part of the fun, you know, when you're watching it, if you're a boy, the first time you watch Aladdin, you're like, I want to be that guy, I want to do what he does, and in this game, you pretty much do, you know, hopping around, there's a bunch of jumping puzzles, for example, you know, there, there aren't really any puzzles in the game, I'd really rather refer to them as tasks, like, you know, when you get to the Cave of Wonders, you have to throw apples on the statue that, you know, with the big ruby jewel kind of thing. And I believe it only really, you know, I believe the boss in that level is actually that statue come to life, which is just kind of weird. And, yeah, I don't know, that that is a bit of a misfire, in my opinion, but is a decent enough boss, I guess. Anyway, you know, you're hopping around, you're climbing, you get to fly the flying carpet. You know, you don't, you basically don't get to control it. There's one level where you do, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, because it, you probably know this part of the story anyway. When you're escaping from the Cave of Wonders, you know, with lava, you, you know, like in the movie, you have to dodge objects on your way out of the cave. And basically, either there's an object at, you know, there's an object at the top, at the bottom, or in the middle. And you just, you're flying straight. You can't you can choose how fast it goes and it gradually increases in speed, but you can control him upwards or downwards. And it's not just like there's those three slots, you know, you can really control him upwards and downwards. And along the way, there will be these apple fourths, I guess. Like, if you pick up four of these things, you get a new apple. So I guess it's apples cut into fours. I don't know exactly how that's supposed to, but anyway, yeah. That's what it is. And then there are, like, you know, other power-up stuff. So, which might also lure you into, you know, very narrowly dodging, or not, the, you know, objects in your way. But it's a very, very fun level, you know. Really, it's got that let's go again, let's go again kind of thing when you finish a roller, not a roller coaster. Well, let's go with a roller coaster, you know. It's, it's a lot of fun, and it's quite intense. The boss enemies are pretty good. Not the biggest challenge, maybe, but, you know, they're fun enough, and they're relatively varied. You know, it's not that much of the same fight over and over. And there are rolling barrels in this game, because, you know, games have rolling barrels. At least they did in the 90s. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they're... What, was there even... Were there rolling barrels in the movie? I don't remember. Anyway. Genie is all over the game, which is, again, you know, a little odd in continuity-wise. But it is a nice... I mean, if you watch the movie, again, you want more Genie. And the game has more Genie. You know, there's actually a level entirely devoted to Genie. That's one of those, you know, new levels that didn't actually happen in the movie. But it's... It's a fine enough level. The also for some reason, now nah, that would be a spoiler. Anyway, Genie watches your health. Basically, he looks thrilled as can be when you're at full health. And the closer you get to dying, which it's, you know, you don't 
only judge it by his face. There is this, what's it called, an hourglass, which again I think they got from the movie, which you know shows how much health you have. And he's gonna look more and more panicky the closer you, and, and it's hysterical. You can practically hear Robin Williams' voice when you see the genie face. And again, you know, it is. You can tell it's the same animators, you know, you can tell that, or at the very least, they knew exactly what, they, they studied the, the other animators' work, or something. And you can pick up wishes, which are in the form of Genie's head, and basically that's, you know, at the end of a level, you will get this, what's it called? It's Basically, I guess a, a speed test, like a, a reflexes test. Basically, you have it, it shows you an object and in the middle of the screen. And if you click your, I believe it's the, it's the same key you use to attack with the sword. By the way, there's also, it's extremely simple to control this game. Basically, there are the four directional buttons and then jump, th throw an apple, and attack with the sword. Those are the only, those are the seven keys you use in this game, you know. So it's also a game which is quite eligible for, you know, using a joystick. And it would still be a lot of fun. And manageable. Really fun gameplay. Anyway, yeah, you have to press just as the object you want is in there and it will use up one wish unless you get Jafar's head which will cost you all your wishes and he'll laugh a bit. Health is also regained by picking up hearts that have the color and the, the little beard of Genie. Save points are these blue vases which you know, turn around and reveal his face. Though that might also be something directly from the movie. I'm not entirely sure. They also implement a couple of other Disney characters. I'm pretty sure Hiss the Snake from you know, Disney's Robin Hood, the one with, where everyone's an animal. I'm pretty sure that appears in some of the desert levels. But yeah. And I am certain I see Goofy and what may very well be Sebastian, you know, from Little Mermaid, in other levels. So, yeah. The dungeon from, you know, again, it, it's elaborated upon. It gets an entire level. And at that point, the game moves dangerously close to Prince of Persia territory, which, you know, mind you, the first... Prince of Persia game came out in 1989, yeah, and the second one in 92, so, yeah. When escaping from the Cave of Wonders, you also dodge these really big rolling balls that pursue you, not entirely unlike... You know what, Disney, I am, I'm just, I'm going to give you the number of a really good lawyer because I have a feeling, you know, you probably got enough money anyway. Yeah. The music is directly from the movie. It's in, I never know how to pronounce this word, midi version, midi, whatever, M-I-D-I versions. So, yeah, it's... It's good news for those of us who can stand that type of music. You know, I can imagine that people who didn't grow up with these games might not be as forgiving as we are. Sound is quite good. There's not a lot, you know, this was before games could properly integrate, you know, full-on voices from, you know, so there's not a lot of voice acting. From, you know, the, the story is told entirely through these still images with text over them, you know, not even like a narrator. And, but, but yeah, you know, Aladdin himself and his enemies and the objects you pick up, all of that, you know, it all 
makes gives off sound and you know fitting sound. The game is not terribly long. It took me an hour and a half to complete, and yeah, that's about you know. But you know, again, it's really addictive. I've played this game. I don't know more times than I've bothered to count, definitely, and I'm still not tired of it, you know. And I would say it also has an appropriate length. It's not like you feel like, you know, I, I don't know, it, it has a sense of accomplishment, I would say. There's some bonus levels, which are somewhat fun. You get to play as a boo in them. Yeah, I suppose that's pretty much it. You get to face Iago a couple of times, you know, one strike and he's out. He, you you defeather him. And, you know, just for being voiced by Gilbert Gottfried, him. I think he deserves that. But, yeah, that... Pretty welcome. Well, level design. I could talk a little about, a bit about that. The levels are essentially straightforward. You know, there's not that much of finding your way, but it does have, like, you know, hidden goodies, and, you know, if you aren't careful, you might miss something good or such. And it also kind of, you know, they, they use the setting and the kind of universe fairly well. There's one of the levels at the Acrobat Market actually has you finding flutes that will get flying rope to come out of these little vases and the rope will fly you to the next part of the level and you then again have to get another flute and you can move on. Also, is it just me or do you pick up the first half of the scarab three times? I don't know, does it just keep... It looks like it's flying away, but it does that every time, including the last time you pick it up. So, it would appear to me that you collect two full scarabs, but yeah. And that's another thing, you know, in the film, as far as I recall, Aladdin doesn't, you know, go hunting for the scarab himself. It's just that, you know, the old man gives it to him. But yeah, you know, what really makes this work is that it captures the atmosphere. It makes you feel like you're playing the movie. And add to that, it's just a fun game. You know, if this was a game by itself, I'd still play it. You know, it would still be fun. In fact, I'm pretty sure I played this several times before I'd even really watched the movie, or at least all of the movie, and I still enjoyed myself, you know, so... Yeah, if you're into retro, ga retro games and you like the film or just the basic concept of it, then definitely check this out. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.